गुड मॉर्निंग वी आर रीडिंग द चैप्टर एन एम ई वी हैव रेड सो फार दैट द वाइट मैन हैज़ रिकवर फ्राम हिज वूंस एंड ही रियली वॉन्ट टू टॉक टू सदा बट ही वॉज नॉट इंटरेस्टेड टू टॉक टू हिम एंड वाइट मैन वॉज वेरी मच फ्राइट एंड बिकॉज ही वॉज नॉट श्योर दैट वॉट सदा एंड हैना हैना वर गोइंग टू डू विद हिम सो दैट वॉज ऑल हैपनिंग देयर एंड you know sadao was behaving very coldly with him because he really do not want to get attached with him and uh, let's read further what happened in the afternoon the second thing happened hena working hard on a unaccustomed labor saw a messenger come to the door in official uniform her hands went weak and she could not draw her breath the servants must have told already she ran to sadao gasping and una- una- uh, gasping unable to utter a word but by then the messenger had simply followed her through the garden and there he stood she pointed at him helplessly sadao looked up from his book he was in his office the other partition of which was thrown open to the garden for the southern sunshine what is it he asked the messenger and then he rose seeing the man's uniform you are to come to the palace the man said the old general is in pain again Oh Hannah Bridge is that all all the messenger exclaimed is it not enough indeed it is she replied i am very sorry when sadao came to say goodbye she was in kitchen but doing nothing the children were asleep and she sat merely resting for a moment more exhausted from her fright than from her work i thought they had come to arrest you she said he gazed down into her anxious eyes i must get rid of this man for your sake he said in distress somehow i must get rid of him so what happened uh, you know you can uh, figure it out that uh, hana and sadao they were uh, frightened because they know now their servants have left the job they somehow could told uh, could tell anybody that you know they are giving shelter they have given shelter to a white man and when a uniform uniformed person came to their place uh, hana was very much distressed that he must came to you know arrest sadao and that was in her mind and she went weak when he saw when she saw that person coming to her house and uh, she was not able to take a proper breath and could tell uh, uh, sadao about that person coming into to her house but when uh, sadao had conversation with that person he said that you know that general is again in pain i have told you in uh, the outset of the chapter that general had kept sadao uh, behind you know in own, uh, in country he has not sent sadao for on the war as a doctor because he really needed him because he trusts sadao only so uh, he said that you know that general really need him because he is in pain so hana so hana was somehow relieved he she was sitting in the kitchen and she was very much at distress she was very much frightened and she told that what was running in her mind and then uh, sadao said that you know he has to get rid of this person for hana's sake because he could not see her in such in such distress let's read further of course the general said weakly i understand fully but that is because i once took a degree in princeton Uh, so few japanese have i care nothing for the man excellently sadao said but having operated on him with such success yes yes the general said it only makes me feel you more indispensable to me evidently you can save uh, anyone you are so skilled you say you think uh, can you you think i can stand one more such attack as i have had today so then sadao was uh, there in general's house and uh, uh, this shows as sadao has already told the general about that person and he really want to get rid of him and general was you know praising him that this shows that you can uh, you know uh, save anybody's life and i am uh, you know at good hands that i have kept you uh, here for m- myself and i know that i can bear another attack which i had yesterday and you will be there for me so and you know that you are very skilled and they were having a very general talk so then Then certainly I can allow nothing to happen you the general said with anxiety his long pale japanese face became expressionless uh, which meant that he was in deep thought you cannot be arrested the general said closing his eyes suppose you were condemned to death and the next day i had to have my operation there there are other surgeons excellency excellency sadao suggested none i trust the general replied the best ones have been trained by germans and would consider the operation successful even if i died i do not came for their point of view care for their point of view he sighed it seems a pity that we cannot better combine the Germ- Germ- german ruthlessness with the american sentimentality then you could turn your prisoner over to execution and yet i could be sure you would not murder me while i was unconscious the general laughed 
he had an unusual sense of humor as a japanese could you not combine these two foreign elements he asked sadao smiled i am not quite sure he said but for your sake i would be willing to try excellency so now they are having a you know this talk over that white man and sadao was very much uh, uh, pale faced he was deep in thought he was expressionless then general said that you know you must not be uh, arrested i am here and you cannot be uh, you uh, must not be get death sentence for this uh, crime because uh, uh, suppose if you get uh, if you are you die today and uh, next day i have to go operation i have to undergo operation so here general it shows that you know general would use his political power his uh, official power to save sadao from any harm because he really want sadao there to uh, for him for himself and then uh, sadao asked him uh, told him that you know that there were so many of doctors there he said that i do not trust anyone i do not trust german team german doctors i do not trust other american doctors i trust you because you are japanese you are skilled and so uh, he um, he was uh, sure that you know that nothing is going to happen to sadao so then what happened general shook his head i had rather not be the test case <laughs> he said he felt suddenly weak and overwhelmed with the cares of his life as an official in times such as these when repeated victory brought great responsibility all over the south pacific it is very unfortunate that this man should have washed up on your doorstep doorstep he said irritably i feel it so myself so thou said gently it would be best if he could be quickly killed the general said not by you but by someone who does not know him i have my own private assassins suppose i set two of them to send two of them to your house to night tonight or better any night you need know here nothing about it it is now warm what would be more natural than you should leave the outer partition of the man's room open to the garden while he sleeps certainly it would be very natural stau agreed in fact it is so left open every night god the general said yawning there are very capable assassins they make uh, no noise and they know the trick of inward bleeding if you like i can even have them remove the body so thou consider that perhaps would be best excellency he agreed thinking of hana he left the general's presence then and went home thinking over the plan in his way the whole thing would be taken out of his head out of his hands he would tell hana nothing since she would be timid at the idea of assassins in the house and yet certainly such persons were essentially in an absolute state such as Jap- Jap- and was how else could rulers deal with those who opposed them he refused to allow anything but reason to the atmosphere of his mind as he went into the room where the american was in bed but as he opened the door to his surprise he found the young man out of bed and preparing to go into the garden so you know then general suggested him that he is having his uh, private assassins assassins are you know those uh, people uh, those hired person hired killer you would killer you would say those used to kill other people you know um, those are called assassins so the general having his own assassins private assassins he said that i would uh, send them to your whole house you would uh, left uh, let the door <laughs> of that man's uh, man's uh, that man's door open and they would come to your house they will kill him you know and they would remove the body and sadao said that that would be the best if you remove the body from there and he was just planning everything he left the general's house and he was planning that you know that he is not going to tell uh, uh, anything to hana because she must be very worried that that assassins were at her house so and that would be better for her that you know she should not know anything about him and uh, that will be a perfect uh, removal of that person from his house he was happy with the plan he was you know agreed with the plan he do not have any problem with that you know so uh, that was a solution given uh, by general to him and he just went home he just went straight forward to the white man's ha- ha- you know room and he he thought that he would be resting in his bed but to his surprise he saw that you know that person was preparing himself to go to the garden it shows that he was very well then what happened what is this he exclaimed who gave you permission to leave your room i am not used to waiting for permission tom said gaily gosh i feel pretty good again but will the muscles on this side uh, always feel stiff is it so sadao inquired surprised he forgot all else now i thought i had provided against that he murmured he lifted the edge of man's uh, shirt and gazed at the healing scar uh, massage uh, massage may do it he said if exercise does not it was it it won't bother me much the young man said he's his young face was gaunt under the stubby blond beard uh, say doctor i have got something i want to uh, i want to say to you if i hadn't met a jap like you well i wouldn't be alive 
If I hadn't met a Jap like you, well, I wouldn't be alive today. I know that. Sadao bowed, the, but he could not speak. Sure, I know that. Tom went on warmly. His big, his uh, his big thin hands gripping a chair were white at the knuckles. I guess if all the all the Japs were like you, then wouldn't have been a war. Perhaps Sadao said with difficulty. And now I think you had better go back to bed. He helped the boy back into the bed and then borrowed, then bowed good night. He said. So we will read till here. So till here we can see that you know that this old uh, that this white person he is happy, he is healthy, and he is feeling still a little bit stiff where he was operated. And Sadao just forget everything, and he uh, you know started inquired his wound, and he said that you know this is nothing, uh, massage will do. And uh, young man said that this won't worry him if it is not so serious. He would um, you know uh, tolerate it, and he finally thanked uh, Sadao. He said that you know if Jap ja all Japanese were like you, there would not have been any war um, uh, between. Between two countries, and I am very thankful that you have saved me. And you know, Sadao was not uh, able at all to become cold, to become more cold to him at that time because he was overwhelmed by the thankfulness of that person, by the you know gainess of that person. He was very lively. He was a young boy, so he was uh, he could not uh, be more uh, indifferent to that person. So read this chapter till here, and next we will read in next uh, lecture.